Now, the method that we use there is exactly what the trapezoidal rule is, but there's some things that we can do to shorten that. There's a much simpler formula. For starters, you'll notice here that all these terms have a half, so we could take that out as a common factor. Uh, also, we actually used certain values only once. We only used this value once, mainly because it was at the very end of the trapezoid, whereas this height here we used twice. We used it in this trapezium and this trapezium. And the same for this one. We used this one twice, we used this one twice, but notice the very end height we only used once. So there is a shortcut for this formula. Now, we refer to these values as y0, y1, y2, y3, y4. Now, by starting with the first value as y0, automatically the very last value will always end up being the number of trapeziums that you actually chose. So the formula that you actually need to know for this is h over 2, y0 plus yn. That's because you only use those heights once. Now, all the other ones, as we just said, we use twice. So we do 2 times y1 plus y2 plus, and basically all the other values. And we're going to stop at 1 before the end one, because we already used the end one. So if you prefer, it's h over 2, first plus last, plus 2 times the rest of the y value. and then you evaluate that. Now, you only see the formula written like this, but that might be more useful to you. So, if I had my table like this, rather than working out all these values individually, I would do this. Now, our h for this one is still our width, so it's still 1 in this case. So, 1 half, first plus last, 0 plus 16 is 16, plus 2 times the other values, 1 plus 4 plus 9, And when we work this out, we get 13, 14, times by 2 is 28, plus 16 is 44, and then when we do a half of 44, we get 22. And as you can see, that is the same answer, but a lot quicker than working out the individual trapezoids, which is effectively what you are doing. So, that's the formula you're going to need for these questions, and this is the table that you should set up for every question to enable you to find the values of the appropriate y values. One thing we did discuss in the previous example is why do you actually use this method? Why, if we can come up with an answer for integration, why would we use something that is an approximation? And that's something that really should go at the start of this formula. This is only approximately equal to the area. Well, for this question, absolutely, you should use integration because you can do that. However, not every question you will know how to integrate. For example, if I was to include something like this, then that's something that you haven't learned how to differentiate, uh, sorry, how to integrate. However, you could easily plug x values into this formula, and you can see that by doing this, we do get a very good approximation to the true answer. So really, the tra trapezium rule is to be used for when equations that you don't know how to integrate, or might actually be impossible to integrate using conventional methods. And this is actually the method that your calculator will use to work out the area. Uh, to improve accuracy, much like when we did rectangles, what you can do is you can increase the number of regions. So if I split this region into two here, then you can see this trapezium is way more accurately than the one I had previous. In fact, all this has just disappeared the error. So if you want to improve your accuracy, include more intervals. And obviously as a calculator, it will be able to do that anyway.